Hi. Okay. Is anyone watching? I will have to probably, I'll have to share it a bit first. Um, or anyone who is watching actually could maybe just if you share the link somewhere, I have to do these things first. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is just the introduction to the course and to the course on Heidegger on, on death and being, which is based on my PhD thesis and my upcoming book. Um, which will be published by Springer. I'm going to share the link to the book here. Um, and so I've spent about seven years now on this question, on the topic, on the question of death in Heidegger and the question of being. And what is striking is that uh, death has really not an existential uh, meaning primarily or anything ethical or any of these rather benign projects that people want to make of, of Heidegger's so-called analysis of the phenomenon of death and how should I comport myself towards death, etc., etc. No, it's really about, it's really about die Seinsfrage, Frage nach dem Sein. It's, uh, es ist ja immerhin auch das Sein zum Tode, nicht wahr? being towards death and not uh, just myself towards death. And um, yeah, I'm just going out to share this again. So basically what the course is, is an introduction to the book and an introduction to the entirety of Heidegger's philosophy, really. I have to make this very clear that it's not just about death and some aspects of death. It's that through death, I have to put the line, it's that through death we get a window into Heidegger's thought fully and completely and, and uh, un you begin to understand what it means to think being in a proper sense and the inherent withdrawal of being, the Verbergung, den Entzug des Seins, das Ereignis als and zug. It is only possible to think through the window of death. As Heidegger says, death is the utmost testimony of being. And so I'm not uh, sure, of course, who's, who's watching at the moment, uh, but whoever is, feel free to share the video now so we can get some more people to join in. Um, the course will start, the seminars will start. So any, there's a couple of different tiers. The first tier is just the content, which means you get five lectures, um, an introductory lecture and four full lectures on Heidegger. And it's the entirety of Heidegger's philosophy. It starts with being in time and then moves on to the Ereignis, or as English say, the event, but we'll get to in the course why, why this is a very poor translation. Then technology, Gestell, Gestell und Gebirg, death and techniques, death and technology. And the fourth lecture, the last lecture is on language and the, well, the Wesensverwandtschaft von Sprache und Tod, the essential relationship between death and being, between the house of being, which is language and death and um, it will show, I think, that there is a response to the question of being, to the science frage, which has been overlooked. And this is something I'm arguing in the book. And this is something I, I'm arguing in the course as well. The way this works is that anyone who signs up for any of the tiers gets so-called lifetime access to these 
lectures. I've just shared a link here and there should be a link, I think also in the description of this video. Um, and there's a limited quantity of 50% off. So if you use this Heidegger 50, um, this coupon, I guess, get 50% off for now. Um, the There will be group seminars, which start, I think, June. Let me see, June 28th, which is a Sunday, and will then run for four consecutive Sundays because the Saturday seminar is already completely full. Um, I've already have enough people who signed up for the Saturday seminar, even before starting these live streams for the course. So I, I want to offer some more uh, people the chance to take the course who had let me know that they're interested. And the course begins on probably a bit of a critique of transhumanism and a, a bit of a reductive or almost silly understanding of finitude and infinity that's very visible in post-humanism and transhumanism, which basically tries to ask, I'm quoting in the introduction, I'm quoting Harari and Kahneman who agree without explicating why, because it's just a positing of ratio, it's not, as always, it doesn't have to be argued for apparently, who say that death is now no longer a metaphysical problem, death is now a technical problem waiting to be solved. And that's, I mean, that kind of, that kind of is quite, it's telling because it shows, it, it, I think it showed in this so-called uh, crisis now that we're going through, how we deal with death and mortality it's, it becomes a, a crisis which is supposed to be managed. So the, the course sets out its question in light of the proposals of post-humanism and transhumanism. And it sets out to think through Heidegger as a thinker who asks the question of being in an epoch where this is already shining forth, this attempt to install technical immortality. But it also shows that Heidegger begins the question of being really in light of death. This Heidegger, um, this is maybe a bit strange, but Heidegger asks the question of being from the beginning in light of death. So he says in a response to Descartes that the formula, the cogito ergo sum, is not really meaningful. In fact, it's for him, if any formula is supposed to make sense, it would be sum moribundus. I am in so far as I am towards my death. And that will be the first chapter. He says, I, I, I can only have meaning, my existence can only have meaning insofar as I am directed towards my death. Death is the ultimate limit in which and against which we always already are and from which as such meaning unfolds. Without death, there can be no horizon of world, which means there can be no, well, meaning couldn't arise without death, which is why Heidegger calls death the own, the eigenste Möglichkeit in time and Zeit and being in time, the own most possibility. So the first chapter then really is on this 
early response of Heidegger to the question of being from the stance of being towards death. And I'll say it again, being towards death is at stake. It's being itself that is towards death, which translates into Dasein's existence and its so-called ontology. Um, Dasein is it's often schematically represented as the human being, and Heidegger says, oh, wait, no, Dasein is not the human being. Dasein is not, I'm not describing in being in time what it's like to take the tram or to uh, use fork and knife to eat. What he's trying to do is to ask again the question of being in light of the being, the Seinde, called the human being, which is the being that can ask the question in the first place. Um, and death, I think, becomes pivotal here because Heidegger post Hegel wants to or needs to think the radical finitude of being. That, that's the, the task he sees and also the radical finitude of being in its interplay with time. And what happens in being in time in writing the text and working out his early philosophy, I think what Heidegger realizes or notices is that when Dasein is pushed most intensely towards being, when Dasein is pushed against its own most possibility, death, when being becomes most intense, is that it cannot be grasped. It slips away. And this slipping away is what Heidegger will radicalize further with the thinking of the Ereignis and the event. So this is what then we'll talk about in the, so what we can almost trace, of course, you know, only in hindsight, but we, we, we can trace the thinking path as that path which is set forth by the thinking of the double movement of concealment and concealment in Aletheia, but also in the, um, in the attempt to reignite the understanding for the meaning of being, but also then in the realization that being itself is that which withdraws, which is what Heidegger will fundamentally radicalize and further um, think through in his later philosophy, which is now called in the das Denken des Ereignis, das Ereignis Denk, the thinking of the event, so called. I don't quite like the translation of the um, event, to be honest, but for reasons we don't have to get into here. So as I said um, before, I mean, if, if anyone has any questions, if anyone uh, could ask me, if, if, if I have an answer to it, I'll try and answer it. Um, the course will start in about two weeks from now, I think. Yeah, it's two weeks from now, 15 days. Uh, so there's enough time to enroll in that Ghent. Uh, and you, the way it works is that you prepare for every seminar, you prepare your the lecture, either by reading the text that's provided or by listening to the audio or by watching the video or by all three of them. And then in the seminars, what happens is we sit down together over Zoom and discuss the issue at hand. And it gives you a chance to talk to peers about your ideas of the course, but also to actually come up with um, was sort of your own responses to the question. And I'm thinking that um, what, I, what I've seen, this is the third time I'm doing this now online, what 
always works quite well is a pro seminar at the end of this. So there will be four seminars in total and then a fifth seminar, which will be a pro um, seminar. And this um, pro uh, seminar is a chance for you to present your own talk on Heidegger, which uh, will happen three weeks or so after the life, the, the, the last uh, um, seminar, really, which will give you a chance to write an essay if you want to and a chance to present a talk about 10 minutes or so, which I think is probably quite helpful to get to make sure you actually understand what's at stake. Um, and as I've said before, it's an introduction to the entirety of Heidegger's philosophy. It probably will make sense to um, read. So what will be provided is, except in addition to the official reading um, of, of my lectures, I will provide some passages from Being in Time, from Heidegger's contributions, and, and of course, also to, um, to uh, we'll read the question concerning technology together, we'll read uh, some essays on, on language together. One of the very important ones is the conversation with a Japanese scholar, which touches upon the impossibility of, um, of trans, not the impossibility, sorry, that was a bit too, too crass. Um, the, the difficulty and the danger of translation. Um, and also, of course, on, 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 on what Heidegger sees a relationship between death and, and language. And I've tried to work that one out in my book. And as I said before, because now there's a bit more people um, watching, I the, the, the seminars for Saturday, they're already full. So um, anyone who signed up over this weekend or anyone who's signing up now will be signing up for Sunday evening seminars. Um, and Heidegger, yes, he Heidegger is a, a crucial philosopher, but uh, one has to understand why, right? He's, he's crucial, not, not for any ideological reasons. Uh, I think that would be short-sighted. Short I think that Heidegger is, 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 has become Heidegger, and it's not even about, it's not about the man Heidegger. It's, just look at the first passage or the first paragraph of Being in Time where he quotes the, um, he quotes from, from Plato's Sophists and he says, Delon gachos humeis men tauta pala gegnoske hemeis de pro tumen oyometha nun de epo rekamen. Which means, and then we thought that we knew what being means, was zayant, but we are now in the embarrassment of not being sure. And then Heidegger says, do we today have any clearer understanding of what being means? And then paragraph one, section one, the necessity of an explicit repetition of the question of being. This is why Heidegger is important. Heidegger is a philosopher after Kant, after critical philosophy, after thinking becomes, if you like, conscious of itself and the presuppositions that it makes in thinking. And Heidegger's thought is so massive because he's the last one standing who is still fully in the tradition, I would think, but at the same time, completely outside of it too. Because if you, you you couldn't think as he does without being also one step inside it and then the other side, completely outside of it to some degree as well. Um, and I'm just uh, just to say it again: anyone who signs up now, there's a limited quantity of the the, the coupon. Uh, there's a link down there. You can enroll now, and I see that some people actually are enrolling, which is nice. Um, and we'll kick off in a couple of weeks with 
usually the, the seminars can be, you know, they're, they're actually really good training ground, um, quite intense. And what we'll do is I will be, probably the first seminar will be more of a, uh, of teaching from, you know, students asking questions, I'm trying to answer them. But we'll also start using breakout rooms very early on, which means that you are, you team up with others um, and then get to talk through the, the material and in, in group work as you would in a, in a seminar at university. Um, I actually, I, I began writing this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this book because I read in 2013, I visited Munich, my sister in Munich. I was sitting in the Staatsbibliothek München in the State Library of Bavaria in Munich. And I read, what is metaphysics by Heidegger? A very good text. If you haven't read it yet, I would highly recommend it especially with the new introduction to it, which I think he added in 1949. And in 1949, he also added somewhere a footnote, which reads, Der Tod, das Gebirg des Seins. That means in English, something like death, the mountain range of being. And that, and, and Gebirg is with a hyphen, so we'll get into, you know, why death and concealment are related, which is also why death is, not the opponent of Gestell, of techniques, but why death is certainly what Gestell has to fight, because death is the ultimately non-available, um, the place that's entirely withdrawn and, and always withdrawing control itself from control. Now, when I read this seven years ago, I wanted to find out what it is that Heidegger means, and this opened up this mad time where I realized that when you read the passages on death, that's where you find the answer to the question of being. Uh, th this chit chat about Heidegger does not provide an answer to the question of being, uh, or Heidegger fails to provide an answer. That's satisfying. Um, it's, I don't know where. <laughs> whether some people can read or not, but um, there is an answer. Of course, the answer is not in an isolated sentence. Uh, the answer lies in thinking through being insofar as it withdraws, which is open to the mortal being for his relationship with death. And what the epoch that we live under is an epoch that vehemently fights death. And we don't even have to get into any kind of psychologizations of, uh, you know, the death drive or the anti-death drive or anything like this. No, on a much more fundamental level, the entire dimension of death is supposed to be crowded out. Um, it's a technical problem, after all, right? As Harari says, waiting to be solved by the masters um, of the universe who apparently have all the answers. If only they had all the data, they could provide all the answers to everything in a neat proposition. Perhaps the science frage, the question of being, is also a bit of a reminder to just the, the finitude of the human being and the impossibility to control everything perfectly. Um, as I said, uh, before, if anyone has a question that I could answer, um, there's never a guarantee I can answer a question, just, but if I can, I'll try. Um, and yeah, what I noticed when I started reading more and more of Heidegger is how prevalent death really is. It, death doesn't go away in being in time, uh, sorry, after being in time after the so-called existential ontology of Daza. And actually death makes a full-on comeback in the so-called contributions to philosophy. Um, the contributions to philosophy is the, as 
according to Friedrich von Hermann, is the second uh, is the second um, magnum opus. It certainly is a magnificent work. Where also Heidegger shows a good sense of humor, where he says, "I call this contribution to philosophy because all fundamental words have been so devoid of any meaning." that now what philosophy has to do is it has to report or announce itself as contributing to its own, uh, its own uh, research. But here in that book, Heidegger says that der Tod ist das höchste Zeugnis des Seins. Death is the highest witness or the utmost testimony of being. Um, yeah, yeah, what is the thing? Yes, um, I think, you know, as an introduction to, to Heidegger, I think if you want to have an introduction to him in, in, a, in a chronological sense, in the sense of the, the thinking path, perhaps start with what is metaphysics, because that's from 1929. It's, uh, it's quite clearly written. You get an introduction to, to Dasein, but it's, he's already on the verge of saying something else than Dasein. And then... The, the really difficult texts I wouldn't worry about because it takes years and years and years. And they're actually they're almost un, been about really difficult. I mean, contribu contributions to philosophy was extremely long. Um, but so the, the, the building, dwelling, thinking, the, the thing uh, as an essay or what is a thing, um, the two different ones, the letter on humanism, the question concerning technology, also, what the course will do is, you know, the question concerning technology makes makes a lot of sense when you read it on its own, but it makes a lot more sense when you begin to understand out of which realm, if you like, Heidegger speaks, which is the realm of Ereignis, the realm to which metaphysics has always already responded, which then leads to the so-called interpreter, that being comes comes to be uh, as as Gestell in this epoch and what it is that this is a response to. So we'll get to, to I think, really a, a bit of a profound perhaps understanding of, of these later texts when we read after the Agnes lecture. Um, but I would recommend getting perhaps the basic writings in English that might be good too and read some of these essays in there but men, uh, but we'll get to um, yeah some there will be some more uh, guided readings and I think we'll begin as I said before we'll begin with being in time we'll begin with uh, with the beginning uh, and then see why it is that Heidegger moves on from there um, and the way this works is that you have access to this website on Teachable, and there are uploaded, uh, I'll share it here, there are uploaded um, uh, um, video content and papers and audio files, and there are three different tiers, I guess you could say, which... Um, one of them is just the contents. Anyone who just wants to do this on their own, that's fine. We have lifetime access to this. Then you can actually get the content plus seminars. And then for those who can't get enough of Heidegger, you do you get the content, the seminars, plus five hours of personal tutorials um, with, with me, which we can start either after the entire seminars are done or during the seminars run where we can intensify the reading of um of heidegger um so yeah, anyone else if, any, if anyone has a question just uh ask what i noticed though is when when it comes to heidegger and and technology and gestell uh in the thing essays the, the, these essays are really quite fascinating is that he wants to come back to the thing post Kant. Because what happens with Kant is that things in themselves lose their essence. There is for Kant 
no thing, well, there are things in themselves, but they have no being of their own. Um, they are noumenal. They are in, in the realm of that which has no name, the noumenon. Uh, they are not, uh, they don't have an uzia of their own, no kind of reason, no essence. And for Heidegger, it's, he asks the question, what is a thing in itself? Because what technology or say the scientific worldview deals with predominantly, or just to say even more crassly, is they deal with abstract laws that they don't see. They're actually metaphysics. That's the funny thing, right? Uh, the physicist that looks at a stone that falls compared to a cat that falls, it doesn't matter. What matters is the mass. It's not the, the cat in herself or the stone in itself. It's the the abstract law of gravity that matters. And post Kant, all philosophers of what we, the, the, what we now call German idealism are dealing with this question of what something is. Um, Hegel certainly tries to overcome the subject-object dichotomy. And then with Heidegger, what, what becomes necessary for Heidegger is to show there even just this split between subject and object, between I and the world, even this split is already only possible predicated on what he calls Daza and the original openness of the temporal, of, of, of a temporal understanding of being. And the Kant's you know, notion of the thing in itself and what we deal with with so-called objective reality with Kant, it's quite fun, fascinating to see how this leads to the world being turned into Bestand, into a standing resource. Um, I will, so we will trace Gestell uh, and, and where it comes from, the, the concentration of all positing and positioning and making available and making controllable and compare this with death as Gebirg. Gebirg as the concentration of concealment, sheltering, harboring, safeguarding. And this safeguarding of beings, which is a comes from a letting be, is not granted in the, the prevalent exclusive mode of Gestell. Gestell is that which wants to utterly control um, and allow for no non-controllability, allow that, that this, this, it doesn't allow for any non-availability. It wants to pull into the realm of parametrical control over the world, over beings. Um, without consideration of their being. And it is, it's tr through death, you could almost say, that mortals begin to realize again that which is uh, on the other side of being, as he says in the essay, uh, Wozu Dichter in Dürftiger Zeit, what are poets for? By the way, this is another very good anthology uh, Holzwege, which is off the beaten track in English, because you have the the artwork essay in there, which, by the way, also deals with the question of what a thing is and the problematical status of a thing. Then you have the um, you have the uh, the essay on Rilke. And Hölderlin, Wozu Dichter, what are poets for? And then, of course, Nietzsche's word, God is dead. That might be, and then there's very difficult ones. There's the, the sentence or the principle of Anaximander. That's a very difficult essay, especially in English translation. Um, and Hegel's concept of experience. But at least the other three are quite readable. I think that that would be a good place to start too. Um, the, the good thing I think about the, the, the course is that even though it's you know predominantly on death, we'll try and cover as much of the main themes of Heidegger. So as long as you read you know, some, some of the 
more popular essays or texts, it'll actually be, uh, it'll all help to a clearer understanding of um, what it is that Heidegger is trying to respond to. But he is, because someone said that it's, you know, that Heidegger is a must read, I think too, but I think he's a must read precisely because he's on the, on this precipice, on this, on the edge between the old world and a new world to speak in a bit of a, it sounded a bit, bit um, cliche like, but the, um, when you think about Heidegger growing up in, in rural Germany and living through this, this massive shift away from, from it's, from all the ways of being towards radically, um, yeah, towards what he calls Gestell, uh, is, is that <clears throat> for him, there is an old meaning in technology. There is really something lighting up of, of, the, of the logos, he says. We, we can see logos in Gestell, but we just don't see, uh, we just don't see logos yet in technology. And he didn't want to get rid of technology. I think he wanted to uh, rather find a, a way in which the Gestell becomes less powerful, a way in which the so-called will to will becomes less powerful too. Um, so that will be, I think, one of the, the main uh, aspects of the third lecture. And I also want to say again that we'll, we'll have at the end of this the possibility to, that you give a talk on any of the topics of the course. Um, so in a, what we call a pro seminar. And um, yeah, I guess the, just um, in terms of perhaps my, uh, my own path, here it the, when you the I, when you get to even to to language in heidegger it it's striking that he sees a relationship between death and language um i think what i'm what i'm trying to say in the text is or in the book is that language can and it'll also be strange, I think, for, for some to, to hear what, how Heidegger understands language. Right? Heidegger does not think that language is primarily a, a means of communication. Um, primarily, language is the house of being, and that could be understood as saying it's opening up the realm in which at all any meaning can arise. It's poetic first. It's allowing for world and meaning to arise in the first place, and not uh, anything else. Uh, really, it's 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 communication information much later. And he really uh, wants to get away from this prevalent understanding. But if we grant him that language is, let's say, the house of being, this opening up this realm where being resides so that meaning can arise for an epoch insofar as the human being always already responds to the question of, um, of, um, um, of being, right? Even if we don't, we, we still do to some degree. Even then, even then, um, but but with the the house of being and and or language as the house of being and its relation to death is such that it's in you know if if de death is the as Heidegger says weirdly enough the mountain range of being, which some also translate as the refuge of being is where being hides is where being finds a resting place, insofar if mortals respond properly uh, to the question of being and to their own mortality. And, and in this way, we, um, we have to heed beings, 
We have to let beings be. And in this way, we also let being be and occur of its own. And the language, heeding language, means to let it also almost with, withdraw uh, and not be you know, a, a perfect source or, or a perfect means of non-ambiguous communication. It's in the ambiguity of words. It's in the intranslatability between languages that meaning arises and not in an attempt to homogenize the world and flatten uh, all meaning such that any, anything that, that's said in, in German can be said in English and can be said in French and can be said in uh, Spanish or Mandarin. No, it, there are words, as for example, the Greek word logos, as Heidegger often says, and the Greek, uh, the, the Chinese Tao, um, and the German word Ereignis, which cannot be translated in the sense of finding just a corresponding translation in some uh, texts. Uh, and as I'm seeing that um, some people are signing up for this uh, course, make sure to use this coupon that I have, which is this one. Um, there's a limited quantity of, for the Sunday seminar. So Saturday is already full. Uh, Sunday seminars start in about two weeks on the 28th of June, I think. So we need to type that coupon into the link. The, um, then you get 50% off for now. Um, so we will we'll have around, best case scenarios, we'll have around 12 people per, per group. Uh, I think we're about at 12 on, on the Saturday. Uh, so I think 12 is a good number because um, it gives everyone enough uh, space. Maybe it'll be a bit more, maybe it'll be a bit less on the Sundays. That's fine. Um, but yeah, if if you sign up, um, I'll very you know, usually email within a couple of days and let you know a bit more about what's going to happen. And for anyone who who wants to uh, take the take the time and you can actually get a couple of five hours actually of, of private teaching uh, too. Um, and I'm currently I just finished actually I just finished that book on on Heidegger on death and being. I finished that um, in April. Yeah, I submitted the final draft, final, final draft sometime in early May. And it is it is an attempt to give an answer to the question of being. Um, I, I very strongly think that that's possible with Heidegger and absolutely necessary too. It won't be, as he says, in being in time, it won't be in an isolated uh, sentence. It won't be in one isolated principle but it will be in a thinking through this question such that the world lights up radically, uh, fundamentally different from its prevalent mode of homogenizing Gleichschaltung uh, of, of Gestell. And I think this is also why to come back to question to, to Stephen's question. Um, I think this is also why the question of the thing is so important, because in in Gestell, in technics, things have no being, are of no being of their own. They don't ever come into their own, which is why Heidegger speaks of Bestand, of standing reserve, of that which stands ready to be not even to be exploited, but simply stands ready without any resistance, without ever showing any of its ownness. Actually, ownness, character, if you like, is, is um, stands in opposition to the operations of Gestell. And hence the question for the thing is so important. It's, yeah, yeah, that one, Springer is very expensive, unfortunately. 
Springer, unfortunately, is very expensive, but I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think the ebook might actually be free at some point. But then again, the book's not even out yet. So the book will be out end of October. Um, and it will, yeah. So end of October is when it will be out. And I'm thinking um, that the ebook will be a, a lot cheaper. But then again, um, to be you know, blunt, I mean, it's about uh, the, the, the course is based on the book. It's, it is not in, it's not what I've written in the book, but it's based on the book. Uh, it's not as much in depth. Um, and, it, and the book might be extremely technical for some. It's, it's very Heideggerian. It's very much within the, this, this language. Um, and perhaps also a bit detailed for, um, for someone who wants to maybe get a bit of an insight. There's a very good book actually by, written by my supervisor called Thinking with Heidegger by Miguel Bestecki, which is, I think, um, in English, a really a decent introduction to Heidegger and from a good, uh, from really a good way of, of reading it and also from someone who knows Heidegger well and knows French very well and also German. He, Miguel speaks German. Um, there's another very good book on death by Françoise Dastur. Unfortunately, this book is very expensive, but I think you can read almost all of it on Google Books. So it's Françoise Dastur, an essay on, no, sorry, it's just in English, just entitled Death, an Essay on Finitude. That's really a, a very uh, good book. Yeah, so if anyone who's maybe just joined uh, has any questions, just message if i can respond i will if i can't i won't um that's the thing about philosophy is not radio i can't respond to anything uh, or everything but it's um yeah um and for i'll say it again what i said in the beginning i think heidegger makes the experience in writing being in time, that being itself is that which always already withdraws, that which always already is that which is withdrawing. And Zug ist Ereignis. Withdrawal is Ereignis, is event, he says, in what is called thinking. It's in withdrawing that something comes into its own. So Heidegger tries to think if you like, the negative, more radically, more fundamentally than Hegel, in an, and also in a non-dialectical way, but in a way of simultaneity. And that really comes to the fore in, in the analytic of death, which is why when I read Being in Time, and I was an autodidact on, um, yeah, uh, yeah, the time spent on the book was massive. <laughs> but I'm an autodidact on Heidegger. So it is possible. I had never had a lecture on Heidegger until I went to do my PhD. I'm so I'm basically self-taught. But the thing is about it, I'm not self I think it's possible though, because I had ancient Greek at school and Latin and everything else and read a lot of philosophy before. And I think it's possible though to do this because Heidegger is uh, a thinker that stands in the tradition and critically goes to read the tradition again and has the entire tradition of philosophy present in such a way that he actually can find a way to read the tradition, the, the tradition of philosophy again such as, such as it lights up and becomes meaningful and meaningful not just in a, in a you know theoretically interesting scientifically interesting way but no in a way that it um oh sorry yes I, so let me know if something doesn't work uh i'll burn full if i pronounce this correctly you should be able to so use this let me type it in again sorry um Use this. Let me know if something doesn't work, please. It should work on all of these. Um, and yes, 
Adelbert said 95 years is cheap compared to the time spent. Uh, the, the unfortunate thing about, about academic publishing um, is just that it, it's massively um, expensive for these publishers. None of the money ever goes to the authors. It, it stays with the publisher. Um, and actually, it's, it's much better to, do, to publish in English than it would be in German. In Germany, you have to pay to, um, to, get, to get published. You pay 10 euros per page. So you write a 300-page PhD thesis, which you have to publish in order to get the title. You pay 3,000 euros to get uh, published. By the way, something I haven't said yet today before is, maybe some of you know anyways, I have a PhD on Heidegger. Uh, I'm teaching at Birkbeck. What I'm trying to do, though, or what I am doing, I guess, is building, an, for now, an online academy. And this is the this will be the third course this year. The first one was on Heidegger and Deleuze on technology. Uh, the last one was on idleness with dignity, which was a very you know, long course on leisure and idleness, scole, otium cum dignitatum, and Plato and Aristotle. I might teach it again, maybe later this year, maybe again next time, next next year in the spring. Uh, and actually, the almost I think almost all of the students who were in this course have signed up again for this one. So they will be on my on the Saturday seminars, and the other cohort will be on Sunday if we get enough people uh, for for Sunday. Um, so we'll have I'll have two, and I'm trying to build really a, an online academy that um, that can provide what I would hope is. Good philosophical guidance. Oh yeah, something else I haven't mentioned yet. Anyone who signs up for the seminars will get access to the forum. So I have a, a website which is Halkion Guild. Uh, there's a bunch of people and I run this, and there's a forum. So you will get access to the forum where you can stay in touch with your classmates. Uh, and so I'll, I'll do this at some point. After the first seminar, I'll send around an email to how you can sign up for this and you can get access to it. Then there'll be a thing that says, you know, class of 2020 Heidegger. Uh, the next course will be on, uh, probably on Nietzsche. And then I've got something a bit bigger planned for the fall because I'm trying to build this up also in a way that um, it... Uh, allows me to have a make a living um, so that I can be free from the bureaucratic uh, clutches of um, the life of a young academic, which makes it almost impossible to be uh, a, a, a decent scholar now who's free from any kind of demands. Uh, but this is an interesting way of doing it. Um, I'm, of course, not sure yet it'll work, but anyone who who signs up can uh, can be um, can feel honored to try and try and support a project like this, perhaps. And yeah, so the I think what we'll have to perhaps um, ponder a bit also on is what I haven't talked about yet is that the last section on poetry and language will be, poetry, language, and death will also be on, on the fourfold, which is Heidegger's notion of, of the gefiert, die Welt, als gefiert, die das Welt in der Welt, the worlding of world as fourfold, um, where human beings are mortals, where human beings are on the earth, in vicinity to the sky, and in vicinity also to divinities, to gods. And this possibility of world, Heidegger sees not as a utopia that's to come as promised, but no, he sees it as a possibility now in almost in parallel, in a parallel dimension, if you like, to Gestell. Um, so the fourfold is possible 
now, and it has to do with what I've come to refer to as poetic existence, which sounds a bit dreamy, um, but really isn't. Um, poetic existence is the existence of letting be, of letting go, of that way of being in which trying to control and manipulate the world is being let go of. And in this letting go, another realm, another possibility of being um, lights up. And this has got, of course, everything to do with thinking death as death, as Heidegger says, with mortals, there's a very weird quote from Heidegger, he says somewhere, actually in the essay, Building Dwelling Thinking, uh, I, I think it is, he says, mortals are those who are capable of death as death. That's a very strange claim. But if you think of death, again, as the so-called mountain range of being, as the gathering or the concentration of all sheltering concealment harboring, then, are, then mortals are those who are open to death as that which is the locus of harboring and sheltering concealing insofar as in appreciating finitude, limitation, incapacity to control everything, that opens up this other realm of existence, which in this sense is poetic and not technical, because the technical is always trying, by using instrumental rationality, to control, to manipulate, to dominate. Whereas the poetic, is, in terms of poiesis, is that which brings to the fore that which already sways somewhere but needs to be freed. And I always like to quote uh, Michelangelo, who said, I saw the, the angel in the marble and had to free it. Um, and this is perhaps quite in line with this too. So the, 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 the course will really get into, uh, also, of course, importantly, Aletheia. Right? The, the, you cannot understand Heidegger without Aletheia, as some say, Aletheia, how truth understood as the simultaneous unconcealment and concealment. Truth only occurs as such, and the world always already occurs in this double movement of concealment, unconcealment. One is not possible without the other. Um, there's no appearance without disappearance. And there is no way of controlling nature without at the same time losing access to nature or losing um, nature. And what I'm lo losing nature to, in, in, in a sense that when we control nature and make good use of, of, of her resources, um, that of course is a way of accessing nature. But the question is, does nature come into her own here? Does, she, does nature show herself truly and fully, or is it what we're finding just what we were presupposing to find anyways, anyways in the so-called hypothesis, right? Hypothesis, uh, the, the, the setzung, the positing of something um, previous, which then needs to be or wants to be found. And yeah, as I said uh, before a couple of times, is if you sign up now, I'm gonna share the link again, perhaps. Um, this is the link to the course. You actually, I think you can actually watch the introduction as a preview that's available. And then you see three tiers for anyone who just wants to have access to these five lectures and videos and and, and audio files, uh, you take the first tier and it's lifetime access. So you can just you know, um, listen to this whenever you want or read it whenever you want. It's Word documents. You can, I think you can download them. 
Uh, the second tier is with live seminars. So there'll be a group, there will be four group seminars starting in two weeks from now, running on four consecutive weekends. We'll meet over Zoom, we'll discuss over Zoom, we'll have breakout rooms, which means that you'll talk to your peers in the group, will you know, guided uh, study questions. And then we'll have a pro seminar at the end of this where you can, you need not, but you can present a talk if you want to. Anyone who signs up for the seminars will also get access to the, the, the members forum, the students forum. And then of course, anyone who wants to have some additional tutoring uh, can sign up for these uh, other, uh, for the third tier, sorry, where in addition to the four or actually five seminars, there's five hours of one-on-one -on -one tutorial. If you have, you know, really um, already have worked on Heidegger and want to get some more insight, I'm actually in the process of writing a, a paper for John Wawerke's uh, new book. He's editing a book on, to some degree on Heidegger, I think. Um, and yeah, I will be part of this too. So I have to, this is one of the things I have to do now. In the next two or three uh, weeks, I have to finish that paper on on memory. Um, that's what I think I'll, I'll write on. And so I'll be, it'll be a very intense Heidegger month again, the coming five, six weeks or so for me. And What's, what, what really has happened with, with this teaching on lines of far is that what, I, what happened in the first one, which was on Heidegger and Deleuze with Justin Murphy, some of the students are still, I think, still meeting for uh, a reading group. So they, they formed a reading group where they started reading a bit more of Heidegger, Ernst Jünger. Um, so that's something that's come out of it. Some... I think for many, though, to be quite frank, I think philosophy is for some really something that they always wanted to engage with and then perhaps didn't get to study it at university. Life gets in the way, whatever happens. Um, and this is a way of, of coming back to it and then staying in touch with like-minded people. There, are, there will certainly be you know some, some really good Heidegger people, um, also in the forum, which is, is slowly picking up and there's slowly more people coming in and uh, hopefully also exchanging more uh, more ways of how to study together. Um, but I think what's that's at least the what I've heard from, from students so far is that it actually does help not just to sit at home on your own, but to join some sort of a group even if it's just online for now. I mean, my, my ideal is always that this leads to uh, leads to some sort of a, a field trip at some point, um, or or at least uh, a meetup of, of people when, when they travel to, there's a couple of people in the US and uh, one of them goes to New York, they'll meet up with the other guy or something. I'm in, in London and uh, so that, that could be, if anyone ever comes up to London, just let me know. We'll have a, a pint. The pub down here is actually open, even though I'm not even sure they're allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, it's. I think it's important to, and this is the weird thing about philosophy too. It, it's, it's fun to be at home and, and, and read and read Aristotle on your own. Um, but uh, I think it always, it needs to be shared to a certain degree and it needs to be um it needs one needs to practice presentation one needs to practice whether what it is that i'm saying actually makes any sense by getting comments um but there is no formal requirement of writing an essay or anything you if you want to you you can and actually what did happen in the last um the last seminar or course on on idleness I don't know how many of them, but several of, of the students started writing. And it it probably helps also with focusing, to be focused on a different topic than usually. It it helps one's own 
focus in other projects in life. One of the, you know, in, in some sense, strangest, but also greatest things that I have, one of, one of the students on, on the courses is uh, Drew from Texas, who runs a jujitsu place. And the, the things you hear is incredible. It's with the, the notion of withdrawal and idleness, if I un understood him correctly, is, is, is a way of, of fighting a jiu-jitsu fight. Um, and actually he's, he's rearranged his timetable according to Wilhelm von Humboldt's university ideal, uh, which was one of the lectures in the idleness course. And uh, so to give students more time more more leeway more freedom uh, i think it's fantastic and so yeah we've had uh really a a, a very interesting group of students who uh who will who will all of them almost all of them except maybe for for one at this point um be in the same seminar again so i don't know how how many of you are here i know that steve's here um but yeah you'll all be in the same cohort again same night we'll have i usually sit here, same place i sit here and, and drink wine uh while teaching uh, which would be completely verboten in the holy halls of academia of course um but uh i can do whatever i damn please in my zoom meetings which is great and yeah i'll just say it again the course is a basic introduction, but not just basic. It actually is is a bit of a tour de force through the, the most important themes of Heidegger's philosophy, which is Dasein and being and time, so-called existential ontology, fundamental ontology. And, of course, then moving on to the question of the Ereignis, um, the question of event, and what it is that Heidegger begins to think like in in this period where he leaves behind the metaphysical tradition and begins to see what it was that all of metaphysics has responded to, which is what he calls an Ereignis. And out of this, which is the second lecture, out of this realm, Heidegger begins to see Gestell, techniques, the, you know, and framing, as the English often say, or positionality. And then... In not in opposition, but in, in a way of trying to understand and think through a way out of the prevalence of Gestell. Language becomes again, or poetic language especially, becomes again extremely important to Heidegger because he sees then in poetry a way of getting over Gestell and its powers. Um, so if you, yeah. You, if you have any questions on the course, on the course, just let me know, and I'll try and answer uh, anything specific on 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 the on the content or anything on regarding on how it works. Just let me know. Um, and there's this coupon that's 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 right there, and it should it should work. I think it has worked for most, so you should get it. 50% off, there's a limited quantity uh, to that. And the way this then works is that you get access for good to these lectures and then the live seminars as well. And then of course also the forum, um, which is at very early stages, this forum, to be honest. Um, and yeah, and then there's, I think the, the most important aspect of this is that it's, it's it's self motivated learning. You you come because you want to come. You don't get a certificate. You don't get um, any kind of credential, except for your own being there and hopefully learning. Um, and anyone who's ever had any interest in Heidegger, I think, will find. At, at least I hope, would find this quite helpful um, because it does think through these important texts um, in a way that they, they, they show their inherent necessity 
uh, and and what it is that Heidegger is responding to and why. Um, and yeah, so um, any questions, let me know. If not, then um, I might do another one of these sometime uh, this week, maybe even, yeah, sometime this week. I'm going to be on Guy Sangstock's channel too soon to talk about uh, uh, death. There's actually a couple of videos uh, on, on the channel now which are on death in Heidegger. So if you want to know more what the course will be like, you can listen to those. Um, and there are a good introduction to some of the topics. The longer one, which is a bit technical and academic, that one is on death and being in time and on death and the contributions. And then there's another one on the uh, on thinking death as a place, where I talk about death as the mountain range of being. Um, and yeah, I'm just seeing that a couple of people have signed up. Um, So NJ, Nick, right? I think it's Nick. Uh, Nick asks, what background do you expect the students to have? I'm a bit of a novice when it comes to Heidegger. You don't need to have a background because it's not, um, there's no formal requirement. What I would like, the only thing I would ask for is uh, an open heart and really a, just a keen interest in learning. Um, no one expects th that you, first of all, what what it is that you, how you read it uh, and what you make of it um, is, is that's, you, you will find, you know, certain aspects relevant and others not that relevant. Uh, I don't think that you have to have any pre, any kind of formal training in Heidegger. If you have any kind of, formal training in philosophy that helps, but we have extremely varied uh, students usually. And um, I think it might actually be, a, so the course is difficult, that, that's clear. It, it, is, it, is, it is difficult, um, it, it's very academic. It's not just a, a, a it's not just, a, so how should we put it? Um, it's not, it's not just a basic introduction. It is a, a full-on, very difficult introduction to Heidegger. Um, but at the same time, that's what it, it should be like. It, it will be like at university too. Uh, no, it, it won't be easy. And I think what usually what happens when people read Heidegger, even the first uh, time, is that because someone just mentioned Dasein, um, is that the subject-object dichotomy is usually broken. Um, when, and one can read Heidegger almost like a, a meditation sometimes, right? It's not even about the technical understanding of, of certain terms, etc. cetera. Uh, it's more about perhaps what it is that, that thinking in a certain way, that's very extraordinary, right? To think of death as your own most possibility. Um, that's so extraordinary, that extraordinary takes you out of the ordinary and into a different frame. Um, and this is usually what happens when people come to Heidegger, but there are no prerequisites. I actually wouldn't mind uh, at all also someone who's quite critical of Heidegger. Uh, that usually helps the discussion. Um, but what happened, for example, last time in the Heidegger Deleuze course, there was a there was someone. Her name's Raven. She's I might be wrong, but I think she works in virtual reality. And she came to the course because she was more interested in Deleuze. And according to her, after the course or during the course, she turned more towards Heidegger because with Heidegger you find the more or most fundamental questions being asked. And these most fundamental questions then are um, really brought to the fore. And this course was difficult too. 
uh, it was actually very difficult. And it, what it did to, what it did for someone else, um, 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 uh, he's a musician in, in LA, is that he's now found um, a, a better way of dealing with, uh, of dealing with te technology in his everyday life in a way that it's less overwhelming. Uh, and he had no, you know, f as far as I remember, he had no formal uh, knowledge of Heidegger um, before. So novices are fine. We, we, we let you into the order. I was a novice myself, basically, when I started writing the PhD. To be completely honest, I, as I said before, I'm also a didact on Heidegger. I started the PhD in 2014. I had never visited uh, a lecture course in Heidegger before. I had read Being in Time on my own um, and other texts, and then read through everything else in a bit of a, a mad uh, uh, frenzy and ended up writing a book. Um, so it should be, it's doable, shall we say. And it, I think it's, doable and, and, and approachable precisely because Heidegger asks these fundamental questions that are that speak to us as human beings. But yeah, good question. Anyone else just um, speak now or text now. Um, if you need the link, it should be down there. There's the coupon as well, which you can use to um, Get the fifty percent off if you want to. I actually find it quite nice that uh, several people have already signed up for the um, the private tutorials, which is, you know, if you if you feel like doing it, um, it's a good way of really intensifying uh, your reading of Heidegger. But then again, I think also the the group seminars. I think that's where. That's probably the, for, for most, that's the best way of doing it is to get into the groups and be fully, um, be engaged with the, uh, with the text and with your peers in talking through it. There's, it was quite interesting. We have Camillo, who's a, a doctor in South Africa. Uh, he's, um, he reads Heidegger. He's an ardent reader of ardent, read, ardent reader. Sorry, of Heidegger, and I think he's self-taught as well. Um, so he comes to Heidegger from the from the notion that care for the other is lacking in modern medicine, and he finds in Heidegger someone who brings to the fore the importance of care. And let's not forget, this course is on death. It's as much as I hate to break it to us all, we're all going to die. Um, it's perhaps the most important task of a human being to learn how to die. Philosophy has always been concerned with the question, first and foremost, of learning how to die. Philosophy itself, according to Cicero and Socrates, means to learn how to die. Michel de Montaigne said this as well. And um, so we will, we, we will be dancing around our death and finitude for four weeks and, and uh, perhaps gain again a good sense of humor which is a bit lost these days, I guess, perhaps also because we've forgotten that we're mortal. The chorus can also be understood, hence, as a memento mori, as a way of remembering that we're mortal and finite beings and not in the business of building planets or leaving this planet or um, erecting a completely artificial framework in which we control everything and then some invisible, you know, minuscule benign virus comes along and the entire world is in a frenzy and thinks that this is the collapse of everything um, because quite apparently we're not in charge. 
And this is perhaps where we are, right? The utmost extreme of the subject of subjectivity. So, as I said before, any questions just write, let me know. And as, yeah, as, I think, yeah, we're starting in two weeks. We'll meet probably Sundays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time, which is, I think, is, what is it, 2? No, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern, I think. And Euro Central European time is 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So you should have, um, you should have a, bottle of wine with you if you want to uh, drink. Um, we'll, we'll hold symposium, which means to it'll be you know, a symposium after another, which means to drink together. Um, just so we're clear, I don't know who's, who's watching, of course, but anyone who's already signed up, uh, the, the original idol, idler group will be on Saturday. Um, so we'll see about the Sunday one. Um, so anyone, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know now, because uh, if not, then I might uh, wrap it up for now. And, um, or you can actually, if you have questions, also you can just email me. If not, uh, sign up now. Um, and you actually, you get access as soon as you've signed up. So you will have access to the complete course. You can start um, watching the videos and reading the text and reading also the additional text. And will there be a mass printing of the Heidegger and death book? What do you mean by mass printing? No, I, I don't know what you mean. Um, the book's published by Springer, end of October, that's when it should be out and it, it's publicly available. Um, so yeah, if that's mass printing, I don't know, then perhaps it is. And uh, there should be a, an ebook. Um, but there is basically a little booklet included with the with the um, with the course, which I think if you want to if you want to have numbers, I think it's about twenty five thousand words. Oh no, the sorry no, Leon, sorry, uh, the book is not um, available now. The, the the Heidegger my book on Heidegger will be available end of October. The course is based on this book, and what's included in the course is is. Yeah, it's, it is around 22, 25,000 words, which is, which is a, a regular ebook. Um, so yeah, that's, that's in there too. And um, basically what it is, the, the lectures are me reading and uh, lecturing in that sense. And um, sometimes uh, making some, some side jokes about uh, uh, whatever came to mind when I recorded it. And then the, thank you. And, uh, and then the, um, the uh, yeah, and then the book will be out at some other point um, too. And I see that a couple more people have just joined. So anyone who's just new, um, what I'm doing is I'm introducing the course on Heidegger on death and being. Um, and anyone who wants to sign up for it, click the link below and type in that coupon to get 50% off. There should be about, I don't know, 10 or so left of these coupons. And we'll start the seminars in two weeks. So I'm looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible. Anyone who signs up for the seminars or higher will get access to the forum to you know, share ideas, on, on Heidegger and other topics, um, but also to stay in touch with your peers, with your 
Kommilitonen, uh, as we say in German, with your fellow students, uh, which I think is very, uh, which is probably the most important aspect of, of such a course is that the content matters, yes, because it, it provides the, the basis for discussion and provides also the basis for a different kind of dialogue and conversation that perhaps wouldn't take place in polite society um, where death certainly is never really a topic. But then again, <clears throat> it is about people who want to learn coming together to learn and also to stay together, if you like, as, as learners. What's a university? A university isn't, is not, if you like, a, a, a place where um, you get a degree. At least it wasn't always like this. Um, in fact, universitas, the very word, it means that it's the unification of scolari, of students, of those who come together for the sake of learning. And as you know, Agamben recently pointed out, uh, the word of the past lives in a true universitas. Uh, this is also why I've called my project the Halkion Guild. And what it is that anyone who signs up uh, helps me doing is to build bit by bit a philosophy academy of really classical philosophy and maybe some 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 other texts uh, too in order to provide a way of learning and teaching the teaching is important right you know the lectures are important but it's not really that important ultimately what I'm saying I think what's more important is how you begin to respond to certain questions by taking questions that are fundamental seriously. I think that's what this is about ultimately. And that's why I, I really enjoy teaching like this more very often than in universities because no one's there to get a certificate. You're there to learn. You're there to explore on your own and with a group, simply for the sake of learning. And hence the name Halkion Guild. It is a guild. It's, in that sense, a, you know, the, the medieval uh, way of, of, of organizing, of grouping together for the sake of passing on the word of old. Um, and yes, such is, such is the, uh, attempt of mine, this humble project, which all and any one of you who signs up helps me build. Um, so for July, it's it's Heidegger. And then I think in, in late August, there'll be a course on Nietzsche. Um, a bit of a shorter course in this one, where actually I will experiment with life uh, live lectures, which will be recorded and then uploaded to the platform. And yeah, uh, so sorry if, if anyone has any more questions on, on Heidegger or on death or on the course or on how everything works, just let me know, please. Uh, I'll try and answer if I can. Titans in the room. Now, I am. Um, I'm thinking what I could still say to make you um, understand better what the course is about. Maybe I'll just say again that I've come to think that Heidegger's philosophy, and one perhaps shouldn't do it like this, um, but in a chronological way, you, you can see a development in Heidegger's thought that begins with 
being in time, um, which can be grouped up in, in really four themes. It's fundamental ontology first, which is being in time, the original repetition of the question of being, which is which already happens in the light of death. It already happens with a focus on death, being towards death. Death is the almost possibility of Dasein, Dasein as the being that asks questions, the question of being, which it can ask only for its relationship with death. And in this intensification of this thought, Heidegger sees or realizes, notices that being withdraws and withdraws utterly when it comes to be most intense. In this withdrawal, he will begin to radicalize in the decade after being in time, in the decade or 15 years after being in time. This is the time where Heidegger writes incredible amounts of books, um, not for publication, but for himself to find a way of holding himself in, in being. And this is where he finds the word uh, Agnes as the realm to which all of metaphysics has responded to. And here death remains utterly crucial because the thought of concealment and withdrawal, that's what Heidegger begins to focus on. And he says specifically, the human being knows the gesta knows being away, weg sein, from, from the various gestalts of death. So death is the window unto the thought of being as inherent withdrawal, as inherent draft. And this then, this to see this movement, of, if you like, of this way of beings swaying, is what allows Heidegger to see Gestell, to see the fourfold, to see the possibility of poetic existence even now. This is how I've come to, you know, if you like, categorize the thinking path in, in these four blocks, but there is a necessity to this development within it. Um, so if you sign up now, you get the 50%. The, the and we'll meet in two weeks for the first seminar. I'll be in touch and uh, about how this works. So I'm, yeah, I mean, if you have any questions then after this, just email me or leave a comment. I'll try and respond to it. Um, and so that, you know, it becomes clear about what's going on. But the thing is, you know, there's five lectures, four seminars, plus a pro seminar which can be public or private that means we meet up for an extra seminar after everything's done we, then you present a talk and you can decide whether you want this talk to be published or not published means it will be on my youtube channel and it will link to your I don't know, website or twitter account or whatever it is that you you do if you have any kind of uh intellectual um decent project that we can uh, link to, then I'll I'll do that. And yeah, so this is uh, how this will uh, work, just in the pure technical sense. And um, we'll we'll see. I think really what it's done for 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 many is one of, one of the most okay. One of the, some of the really the, I get emails from students sometimes. One of the some of them. Some of someone wrote a couple of weeks ago. It's, like, it's well that that you know, there's a, a passion for learning again, um, and that's most important because Nick asked before: Is it you know important to have knowledge of Heidegger? No, if you have a passion for learning, that that's all you need. Um, there, there's no dogmatic uh, preaching of the one true reading of Heidegger, it is one of the most fundamental questions of what it means to be human, that we have to die. Uh, there's one thinker who really thought through this ex extremely profoundly, that's Heidegger, uh, and also in a way that, um, uh, that it speaks from a certain 
yeah, a certain stance where, where, where death becomes, you know, not, not some contingent event that takes place at the end of life. And no, it, it's, it's, as he says, we, we, we dwell in death. And Rilke is very important here, the poet Rilke. It's Rilke who teaches Heidegger. Heidegger reads his letters, many, his many, Rilke, Rilke's many letters on this topic. And Rilke says that the human being is only an adult when he begins to treat his death as a friend. Death is the other side of being. Death says yes and no at once, Rilke says. And we cannot be human without a relationship with our death. And Heidegger, when he's very, very old, and now I'm quoting from um, Gesamtausgabe 13, so this is Collected Volumes, Heidegger number 13, which hasn't been published yet in English, I think. Um, it might be, I don't know. But I don't think it was, actually. And Heidegger here comes back very late in his life. Um, wo aber sind wir? But he writes, he writes a, a short text or a short poem for his friend Erhard Kestner. And he says, where are we? I'm translating from the German. When we attempt to carry out Rilke's call to us, which says, Sei allem Abschied voran, be ahead of all departing, of all parting. Then Heidegger asks, are we dwelling in death? Unroamed land, not the end, not turning. Unheard sound. And the rest is too beautiful and also too difficult for me to translate on the spot but I would really like to um, point out how important death is to Heidegger until the end there's another really very moving short text in um, collected volumes number 13 which he wrote for a former student of his who came to visit Heidegger about just a couple of months before his uh, student died. And he doesn't um, mention in the text um, why his, his student died. The name was Fridolin Wipplinger. And the text is in German, Fridolin Wipplinger's Letzter Besuch, Fridolin Wipplinger's Last Visit. It's, I'm looking for the text now. He. He talks, he, he remembers, it's very important that he remembers his last conversation with uh, his student, his former student on Aristotle and Parmenides. And then, so it's, it is, you see, a conversation between a teacher and a student, between two who became friends in their learning together and in their questioning together, in their coming back again and again to Parmenides, to Aristotle, to the one question. And then, though, it ends on the following. Months later, the news of Fridolin's sudden death arrived. Fridolin devoured himself in his passion for thinking. For his family and friends, the sudden parting gave them an almost unbearable pain. Yet, slowly, this pain is transformed and transforms itself into gratitude for the one who has parted. Those who enter into thanking Duncan 
are those who experience the force, which is full of geheimness, full of that which is the gathering of home, in such a way that that which becomes present from that which has been is this where is where this thinking as thinking shelters itself and finds a place. So you see what Heidegger here lays out. The thinker always thinks in terms of concealment and death, and then has to come back in their finitude, despite their finitude, to an understanding of that which has been thought, which needs to be thought again. What is it that Aristotle says about being? T N N I, I think, that which was, being, the old. Das Sein ist das Alte. Being is the old. And it is in the vicinity to death that thinking comes into its own. Without death, there is no thought. And in the world, without death, there will be no thinking beings anymore. So if there aren't any more questions, I shall leave it at that. If you do have any more on the course, leave a comment um the uh the the peop people are signing up which is nice um so um as always let's form a, a good group as we've done many times now and share it with your friends if you think they're interested or might be interested in something like this and then i'll see you all in a couple of weeks to um to read some Heidegger and to contemplate our mortality. Thank you very much for your attention, for your time. Highly appreciate it. I wish you all the best and keep well. Thank you. Good night.